They bury me in the water and I came, I knew. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I'm baptized in blood. What's up, everybody? I'm excited to bring to you um, somebody who we've already had on the podcast, but he's an instructor for um, the She's an Asset three month course. Um, he is our shooting instructor. His name is Andrew Keith. He's been in law enforcement for 15 years. He was on SWAT. He also was a canine handler and he has a masterclass shooter in USPSA. He is a Marine Corps veteran. Am I missing anything? Cause I feel like, I feel like I cut it off. Oh, that's the hot points. It's the high yeah. Okay. The cool. Real. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited for you to, to talk a little bit to the ladies because, you know, we I have a lot of women in the DMS, you know, messaging me, reaching out to me, talking to me about this course. Um, there's a lot of buzz around it, but like there, there's a, there's a lot of confusion, I think around confidence. And I thought it was important, you know, to bring to bring you on, you know, oh, and he, and you've been a sergeant for five years. You're, you're not a sergeant anymore because that you don't want to be, but you were a sergeant on the road for five years, correct? Yeah. 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 So here's why that's important is I just think it's important to hear from like your point of view, because like they all hear from me all the time, but I'm just some chick. I'm like another chick, but like to hear from, you know, a guy like you, your position on this, I think would be really good. So let's talk, let's like dive right in, Andrew. And I want to talk about confidence. Like, so I think, I think every single officer needs to be confident, confident on the road. Do you think so? Oh, absolutely. I mean, your, your lack of, I guess, fear, anxiety, whatever emotion you want to put on it comes from a very core lack of confidence and ability right so so if you think about it as like if i asked you right now hey tie your shoes you you would literally not feel any anxiety because you've been tying your shoes for decades and you just there's no amount of anxiety or or i'm not sure what the word i'm looking for is but there's there's no amount of anxiety in that. Like you're not worried about that. You're just like, oh, okay. So what? This guy wants to tie my shoes, right? So the whole point of the course is to get you to a point and to start driving you down that path to where there's no more fear, there's no more anxiety in how you use your firearm or your ability to shoot, hmm. because you know it's one of those things where you know we, often in this profession we talk about well, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Okay, well, I mean, if you, if I give you some complex tool to use that you're not comfortable with, there's going to be fear and anxiety when it comes time to use that tool. But if I can give you like a screwdriver, teach you how to use it, then anytime a screwdriver comes up, you're not going to experience fear and anxiety because you, you're like, okay, well, I'm cool. I know how to use a, a screwdriver. I know, oh, wait, it's Phillips head or, flat, or flathead. Cool. I'll grab the appropriate one go to work and you don't have any anxiety about that so i think a lot of officers they are they within themselves they are questioning their ability especially to shoot and so when qual day comes around they get all this fear and then anxiety and it starts making things worse i want you to walk in to a qual and be like okay cool we're quality today and be like i wonder if i'm going to shoot a 95 percent or 100 percent not real sure. And if I pull one, I might get a 95. But for the most part, I'm going to shoot 100%. For the next 10 years, I'm going to average around that. But how do you build that? Like, how do you build that confidence? By doing it. By handling the gun. The yeah. gun is not something you handle once or twice a year. You handle it all the time. So there's so much stuff you can build in just framing things in your mind a different way than probably what you were taught because there's there's so much law enforcement training there's a bunch of dogmatic stuff and it's just incorrect or it has been advanced upon right so you know every every time we have a war every time we have anything like that there's advancements in medical technology so the way we deal with disease or injury 
now in 2022 is not the same way we dealt with it in 1941. Yeah, yeah. Because of those advancements. So what we're trying to do is break out of the whole dogmatic, old school way of teaching things, which seems to just be lagging around in, in police and military training. And so we're trying to break through that, get you to look at things a little different way, get you to look at things or get you to actually practice things in dry fire that will actually benefit you on the range. So that when you go out there, there's, there's no real lack of confidence. You know what's going to happen based on all the practice you've been doing on your own. But you brought up something and you talk about like the dogmatic ways of doing things. Cause it's really interesting because that's how I met you actually <laughs> is because you remember that post that you posted is something about like the dogma. And then you, then there was like four steps. What, what was it? Do you remember off the top of your head? I don't remember the entire post, but I think the whole kind of gist of the post was there, you know, things like pinning the trigger to the rear. Any, anyone who is listening to this male, female, whatever, if they have been to law enforcement training, they have probably been told to pin the trigger to the rear when the shot goes off. That does absolutely nothing for you except make you slow. Nothing. There is, there is zero benefit to it whatsoever. There is nothing in it that's going to make you fast. There's nothing in it that's going to make you more accurate. It is simply some old school dogma that has been passed down from generation to generation. And no one ever put their hand up and said, wait, stop. Why should I do that? Because if they ever ask why, no instructor would ever be able to explain why. Mm-hmm. They would never be able to show you why you should do that. Because there's absolutely no benefit to it other than making you slow. It's just like one of those, we've been doing it. We've just always been doing it this way. So we're going to do it this way. We're just going to keep This is the way we've always done it. So let's keep doing it that way. It's like, well, it's not working out with a, you know, the general law enforcement accuracy rating is around, you know, 20 to 30%. So, you know, it falls back to the thing of if you go on YouTube, Mm-hmm. You know, the big, great resource of YouTube and you look up officer involved shootings and you see how these shootings play out. What is required to solve these shooting problems? If your training doesn't look like that, then your training's wrong. So if your training doesn't include faster splits, accurate hits at speed, you know, moving targets, things like that. If you if you go through these and you objectively look at them. And you say, okay, this is what a real shooting looks like. Mm -hmm. If your training isn't trying to mimic that, then the training is just wrong. It's just Mm -hmm. off. That's a really good point. One thing I forgot to say is you were a firearms instructor for a while, right? Oh, yeah. I've been a post-certified firearms instructor since either 2009 or 2010. can't remember. One of those. But you're also like a competitive shooter now. And so like, what, like, what do you think is, I mean, there's so much different, right? Like, but like, what, what would you say? Like the biggest difference is, is like what you're teaching in this, in this class, like the three month course, like, what do you think is so different from like, like what you're teaching versus like what, what officers are learning in the academy? Um, I'm teaching you how to go fast. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching you how to how to perform the tasks at speed, because when you look at it, you know, it's like if you go to a qual and you have like, for instance, my department's qual at 20 yards, you have eight seconds to fire three rounds. That's what two and a half seconds per round. Mm -hmm. But if you look at actual shootings, officers are shooting like quarter second splits. They're not shooting two and a half second splits. They're shooting quarter second splits. So we have to learn where things come off the rails. We have to learn when you're going faster than your ability. And then you have to figure out, okay, the first step is like, is what I'm trying to do possible? Mm. So I've never seen a human being shoot faster than a 0.11 split, maybe a 10, maybe a 0.10 split. In competition, 
on in law enforcement anywhere. I don't know that humans are capable of much more than that. So you have to say, okay, is this possible? Is it possible to shoot 0.15 splits? Yes, there are people out there that do that. So then you say, okay, well, this is possible. My goal is possible. Then you say, can I do it? Mm. And then you have to start figuring out how to get there because it's kind of like, you know, before you became a cop, you drove around, you know, you went to the mall or to the restaurant or to the, you know, wherever you were going to go. And you drove around at a certain speed and everything was moving at a certain speed and it felt really comfortable. Then as you become a cop, you get into pursuits and you start driving cars at upwards of 100 miles an hour, maybe more. Things look different. You have to act differently Mm -hmm. to understand that. And so the only way to really do that is to go through like a pursuit course and learn to drive your car. You have to go 100 miles an hour to learn how to operate your car at 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So the thing with firearms is you have to go fast and then learn how to get what you're looking or get your results fast. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you have a fast draw, you have a slow draw. But if all you've ever done is slow draw, you do not have a fast draw. Yes. Yeah. So you've got to try to go fast and then you got to kind of figure it out or have some coaching along the way to help you get there. And like, I think what's really important too, and I just want to highlight is like, even though the course is for women, I think we can all agree. (laughs) All of the content in here is for any officer, right? I mean, it's not, a woman doesn't shoot a gun any differently than a man, but the only thing that, and I think, and I know you're going to talk about this is our hands tend to be smaller, right? So like my, my duty weapon that I've been, I've had for years, um, it's about a Glock 45. That is really fucking big for my hands. Like, what do you, what do you say about shit like that? I mean, in my department, I push for more handguns that are more adjustable, not because of the female male thing, but simply because like, I mean, I know male officers that are like, you know, five foot five, right. They're, they're 140 small. pounds, you know, like it has nothing to do with the gender as much right. as it has to do with the hand size and the strength and all of that so it's like you have to get as a department you really need to get more individually customizable firearms that come from the factory that way Mm -hmm. so that you can fit the gun to the person and then it's like you know i can't teach you to be usain bolt and set world records in sprinting if you have shoes that are too big yeah or shoes that are too small You know, like you need a fucking good pair of shoes that fit right so that now you can start pushing your ability to the next level. Yeah. And I mean, there's certain ways around certain things, but at some point it's like you you have to have a gun that somewhat fits or at least is close enough where you can work around. Yeah. And you talk about grip, though, like you're going to go over that, obviously, in the course, right? Oh, absolutely. Grip is a grip is your interface with the gun. That is where you touch the gun. Honestly, the gun would recoil just straight back if it didn't run into you. Mm. And so you have to figure out how to let it run into you, but return to the aiming point without a whole bunch of problems, right? Without it going too high or without the muzzle dipping too low. So it's kind of like you're going to learn in the course how to mitigate recoil so that Every time it goes boom and the slide cycles, it comes back to where you were trying to aim to begin with. And that'll make you faster. Absolutely. Right. So let's say what's going to happen in your vision is in your vision, you're going to see the front sight. The gun's going to go boom. And as the slide cycles, you're going to see the front sight lift and come back down. So if the front sight lifts, comes back down below where you're aiming and then comes back up to where you're aiming. If we can eliminate the below and it just comes up and drops right back down to where you're aiming, then you're naturally going to be faster. So a lot of it is not necessarily shooting faster. It's shooting sooner. Mm. So you're just being more efficient. You're not necessarily just, you know, muscling the gun and running the trigger as fast as you can. 
you are simply shooting sooner, not necessarily faster. And like how, like a, how, how, like a big question that has come up is like, so how are people going to learn this technique, right? These techniques had to be better, like a better shooter virtually. Hmm. Well, I would say more, I try to put a percentage on it, right? So, so probably 75% of everything you do with a firearm can be done without live ammunition. Mm -hmm. Now that does leave 25%. There's going to be a portion where you need to buy ammunition. You need to go like recoil management. I can't teach you how to, I can give you tips and I can get you out on the range and I can kind of walk you through how to manage recoil. But ultimately, you're going to have to buy live ammunition. You're going to have to go to the range and you're going to have to fire the gun and start kind of taking the tips I give you and feeling out how to do that. Now, the other 75% the draw and getting your sights to fall on the target every single time, reliably and consistently, every time you draw the gun, your reloads hitting that mag well every single time, reliably and consistently, transitioning targets, you know, whacking two rounds on one target and immediately transitioning to the other target and whacking two rounds. Things like that can all be done in dry fire. You just have to kind of know how the progression works. Mm. There's very little stuff that has to be, that just absolutely has to be 100% live fire. Yeah. You have to live fire recoil mitigation. You have to learn how to manage it in live fire. But gun handling, dude, gun handling itself is 90%. You can do it dry. You can get yeah. so much from just doing it dry. How often do you think that officers should be dry firing? It depends kind of on how you learn. But I would say in general with human beings, small sessions every single day are better than marathon sessions twice a week. Because at some point you're going to lose focus. Where if I just do 10 to 20 minutes every single day for the next year, I'm stacking up a lot of focused training hours. Mm -hmm. If I do one two-hour marathon session every Wednesday, then, I mean, how much of that is focused? Or, you know, is it half an hour and then I've wasted an hour and a half? Or is it an hour and I've wasted an hour? You know, some's going to stick, some's not. But if you do the small part where you're like, okay, I can laser focus on this for the next 15 minutes, then doing that every single day will benefit you more than those draining marathon sessions where half of you're just going through the motions. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because like a lot of people get kind of confused by that, you know, and they're like, oh, how am I going to learn firearms without going to the range? So I'm, I'm glad that we clarified. What do I you would think? Challenge people, I would challenge people to sign up for the class, take the class, and at the end of three months, I challenge you to look at me with a straight face and say you're not better. If they do the work. If they do the work. If they do their part. Mm -hmm. And my part is to lay it out simply and cleanly so that you know what to do. And if you do it at the end of three months, you will be better. I mean, that one feedback we got or a couple of couple of DMs you got about, you know, just the, the free part where I just showed you three little tips that was like real quick, right off the cuff, like, hey, here's how you can go faster. And one female was like, man, I was smoking my lieutenant. And it's yeah. like, yeah, if you start, if you start seeing the efficiency, then all of a sudden you're burning it down and people are like, oh my God, you're so fast. And it's like, it's just efficient. Yeah. And like, and here's like what, here's the thing is like, there, I don't think anything can fucking replace that feet, that like feeling of like instantly earned respect, especially on the range or like on the mats and DT, you know, on the job. And I just think, and, and that goes for any fucking gender, <laughs> any person, you know what I mean? Because let, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. There's plenty of officers, males too, you know, males that go to the range and suck at shooting. It's not, you know, it doesn't discriminate. Right. And, and well, so like 
most departments are mostly male and mostly they suck at shooting. So <laughs> exactly. it's like, don't, don't be the one that sucks. You know, like no, no male officer really wants outshot by a female. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want outshot by a female officer and that's not, you know, like an I hate women kind of thing. It's like, I don't want outshot by fucking anybody. Yeah. You know, you show up to the range, you better fucking show up heavy, dude, because I'm coming with all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, you're going to shoot me, you're going to earn it. And and that's kind of what I hope for the class is like, I want women to go out there because I want it to get past those male egos when they outshoot them of like, well, but it's like, no, they ain't no well to it, motherfucker. Like, I outshot your ass. You want to you wanna outshoot me? Then you better outwork me. That's it. They better take it the fucking class too. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you're gonna beat me, you're gonna outwork me. I don't mind getting outshot by somebody who's better than me, that's done more work than me. I don't mind that at all. Mm-hmm. But if you think you're gonna step up to the range and outshoot me simply because you, you know, think you can, man, you better come heavier than that. <laughs> that's not gonna work. Yep, exactly. You know, and, and that and again, and just to reiterate, I just think it's important that, you know we drive home the fact that there's nothing better than that feeling of just like, I just fucking killed it. Like, you know, the women who took the free training and, and DM'd me, I mean, we had hundreds take that free training, but like, you know, multiple would DM me. I mean, we had women watching it with their husbands, like taking the training, all three, like all three of our classes with their husbands and shit. And like, everybody's like walking away feeling good. But like, we had some women that just coincidentally were going to the range or whatever. And like instant, like instant results. They were like, holy fuck. And just like that feeling of like, I don't got to worry about this shit anymore. Like, I don't got to worry about going to the range because it's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking for anybody who's not like probably a competitive shooter (laughs) or like who doesn't shoot all the time. Right. And so I just think it's important that, you know, anybody listening can understand, like, I don't think that you can replace that feeling. It's the same feeling like that smash is going to teach you. I mean, I don't think, I don't know. I think I might've forgot to tell you guys, but Andrew's a Brown belt in BJJ. He'll be up for black here probably within the next year. Um, so obviously you have an extensive career in it, just like smash, like there's no better feeling than going hands on with somebody and then like taking care of your business. Right. Especially when you're young, go back to being like a younger officer. Cause that's probably what you can relate to, or even just a smaller officer. You're not small, but like just being able to be like, yeah. And like everybody around you is like, fuck, like, ah, oh, like she can do this. Like she can handle her shit. And it's like, yeah, man. Yeah. I think like, you know, there's obviously difference in, in men and women and how they, you know, their world views of things, but the skill sets are, are pretty objective. Like mm-hmm. either you can shoot or you can't, I don't care if you're a, a man or a woman, it really doesn't matter to me. It's like either you can shoot or you can't. And, you know, once you develop that confidence for it and you quit having the anxiety, cause like, you know, pro tip, police quals are easy. They're yeah. easy. Pick one, you know, pick one. It's they're generally not that hard. Mm-hmm. And so once you kind of push yourself and you do the work and you push yourself beyond that, then you start seeing how easy they really are. And then there's no qual like, or there's no anxiety for the qual. It's like right now, like uh, I worked night shift last night. I've had about five hours sleep. Like I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty smoked. I could go past my department's qual right now. If they called me and said, can you be at the range in 25 minutes, just about how long it takes me to drive there and pass the qual, I would probably be like, sure. Can we double the distances? So it's at least a challenge. And that's because you fucking train all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all just doing the work. Mm-hmm. It's all doing the work. It doesn't matter. Shooting is shooting. It doesn't give a shit if you're male or female. It does not care. If you do the work, the gun will perform how you make it perform. The yeah. end. There's no, there's no like, well, my hands are kind of small or my my triceps are, you know, not as strong as it, it doesn't matter. There are certain there's certain little techniques around that, and you will still be the best shooter in your police department, even though you may not be the biggest and strongest. Because I'll tell you, guys, especially guys, they muscle and try to fight the recoil. 
it'll actually make them worse. It'll make them slower. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that you've got to give recoil somewhere to go. You've got to, basically, it's more about not the sights lifting, but the sights coming back down to the aiming point. And once you understand that, there's no more fighting it. Like, I don't fight it. There's no point in it because fighting it's just going to make my sights look like the old doorstop, you know, the little spring that's like, <laughs> right? It's going to make it do the, it's going to make it do the, <laughs> well, I have to wait for the sights to settle before I can shoot again. But if I can learn to absorb the recoil, get it somewhere to go, and that sight drop right back down to where I'm aiming, then I can shoot again. I don't yeah. have to wait. That's a hell of a visual, man. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and your sound effect was pretty epic. <laughs> oh. What do you think about, you know, as like, as we wrap this up, I'm just trying to get into, I'm trying to get into any, any questions I could possibly ask you. I'm trying to ask them all. What do you think makes somebody not a liability at their police department? The hard skills. I think. I think as law enforcement, and, and I think if anybody who signs up for this class really objectively looks at their department and their training, you will find that law enforcement oftentimes puts the proverbial cart before the horse, mm -hmm. right? So they're, they love to talk about utilizing cover and, and moving this way and moving that way and all of that shit. But if you can't shoot, you can't utilize cover enough to solve a shooting problem. So it's like if bad guy is shooting at you and you're behind cover, you can't stay behind that cover well enough to return fire. Your ultimate ending is going to be you getting sights on a bad guy who rates it and putting metal, putting lead to meat, right? And if you can't do that, then you can't hide behind cover good enough. You can't clear a room with the proper footwork enough to solve the problem of someone shooting at you. Mm -hmm. It's all about the shooting first. And then we start learning the tactics. Then we start learning the footwork. Then we start learning how to use, utilize cover and use it to our advantage. It's not an advantage to you if you can't shoot. It's something simply to hide behind. Mm. That's a good point. So, as we wrap up, what's your advice to every woman listening to this? Oh, my advice would be take the training, do the work. You'll see the benefits. You'll, you'll see the benefits probably immediately. Yeah. If not, and you're doing the work every single day or every other day, like, like I ask you to do in the weekly videos, you're going to find at the end of three months, you're going to be improved. At the end of six months, you're going to be even more improved. At That's the end of a year or two, you're not even going to be uncomfortable with a gun at all. Like gun handling and shooting is going to be subconscious to you. Kind of like, like I used the analogy earlier of tying your shoes. You know, how many of you could tie your boots up while you're talking on the phone to somebody and you don't think like, you know, you don't think the, the four and five year old, like, Oh, the rabbit jumps over the log and it makes it, you know, you don't have to go through the shit that makes your, your boots tied. You just do it while you're talking on the phone to your friend. And you don't even think about it. And that's yeah. the whole point of that subconscious competence with yeah. guns that when you get to that, then you can start learning the good shit. You know, the high speed, low drag, clearing rooms, utilizing cover and all that stuff. And it's so much easier because you're not thinking of, oh, I should grip the gun like this. I should see the sights like that. I should press the trigger like this because you're so comfortable just, just doing it, just letting it do that. You can focus, you can use your brain power on other shit. Yep. It's good. Good advice. I appreciate you being on here for a second time. If you guys, um, if you want to get to know a little bit more about Andrew, although we really did hit the high points, you can go back. I don't know, probably, uh, I think it was it like the end of March is when Andrew's first podcast episode was up. You guys can go check that out, but go and hit the she is an asset course. You can go to she's an asset.com or you can just hit the show notes, come and check out our course. Um, it's, it's unlike anything you're going to find for, um, future law enforcement officers or law enforcement officers, just, the, just in the container that we put it in. It's just different. You have training and you have coaching 
and it's, you know, you've got the, you know, the combatives aspect, you've got the firearms, which is that in itself is actually becoming extremely popular. Everybody's teaching that, but what really sets us apart is then you have like my mindset and confidence coaching, and you have live recorded calls happening once a month with your instructors. You get to get on with us, kind of be having a conversation like Andrew and I are having right now, except you'll get to be able to have a round, a round table with all of us, um, ask questions all the time. And really it's just about, it's just about like you against you. Like this course is just you against you making yourself the absolute best you can be. And so you don't ever have to feel unsure or worried or less than, or ever wonder, like look around and be like, bro, am I a fucking asset or am I a liability? Like, am I a liability? Do other people look at me like I'm a liability because nobody wants that. So you can go and check Andrew out on Instagram at armed threat solutions and uh, hit, hit the link in the bio or hit the link in the show notes if you guys um, want to join us. And we hope to see you next time.